Hey everyone, this is Dr. Kevin McNulty, and I'm here to share something very special today for you, and that is to discover the defining moments of your life. Well, I think when we discover those, our life changes, but also we also change the life of others because of it. And uh, so where would we start with this? Because I have been on the road for over 40 years in 65 nations doing differences, doing help, doing changes, and uh, seeing these defining moments and what I could have done and what I should have done and what I did do. And I trust that all of us who are listening to today and tonight, I think that you all have to go through this with your own life to define that. And so uh, when, I, when I think about it, I think of what, what was my beginnings? And this one word came to me, rejection, rejection, rejection. <laughs> In other words, as I went from being a very top tennis pro number one in Michigan and uh, number one on the Michigan State team and also with the Central Michigan University team and, uh, and having so much opportunity to keep that as my life. And yet I made a shift. And you might make a shift in your life. But I made a shift when I met Jesus. And I sensed that he had come into my life. It was just a special day in my life where I just opened up to him and said, if you will come in, I will go into your life, you will come into mine, and that's exactly what happened. He came into my life, I gave my, my life to him, and it began, it began a change of my life. So it was a defining moment, and I didn't know how big a defining moment it was, but it became the most amazing change of my life is to start to get him involved in my life. I, I don't know if you've done that, but if you haven't done that, you have missed a great opportunity. Uh, when I think about where these rejections were, they were in this, the uh, Chicago, uh, then in the Philippines, and then uh, in uh, the, or Orla uh, not the Orlando, in the, the West. And when I went to the West, um, I went there to, represent Christ, and I was, what I felt was a rejection. I said, well, th I went to a place where it was basically uh, the Filipinos uh, were with me, and uh, the tribe of, of, uh, uh, of the, uh, 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 of the tribe of the uh, people there, they were Indian tribe, and when I knocked on the door, I said, I'll, I'll share Jesus with them. When I knocked on the door, it was rejection. The next day, rejection. The next day, rejection. And I thought, wow, this is like a whole month of rejection. And I thought, how does, how does people handle this rejection? And one of them, uh, he had died after I prayed. There was one person, one tribe, one, one tribal man that I prayed for. The next day in the field, I found his body in a pool of blood in the field. And I'm looking at the, his body thinking, wow, uh, at least I know where he went. And so I'm praying for him. I thought maybe, maybe I can resurrect him. And uh, the the part of the tribe of the, the Paiutes, they came out and they were watching me pray over this, this dead body. And they started, and I said, you know what? If nothing happens, I'm going to have to do something. And nothing happened. So I stood up over his dead body and talked to them about the last thing that he did was he received Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And so I just gave them this opportunity to do that. And 17 of the people who were listening to me and watching this, they gave their life to Jesus. The next, uh, the next day, the head of the tribe, uh, the Paiute tribe, he came to me and he said, listen, he says, we've got a funeral to do for them, and now that we know that he's a Christian, we are not Christians. Would you do the funeral? So I said, yes, I'll do the funeral. And I, as I was doing the funeral, I was saying, you know what? 
everybody in this tribe should know where, I said, how many of you have had, well, this was a friend of yours, and most of them raised their hand and said, yes, he was a friend. I said, how many would like to see him again? Most of them said they'd like to see him. I said, I know where he went. I know how he got there. Would you like to know where and how? And most of them raised their hands, and, uh, and they said yes. So I said, he became a Christian. He, followed, he, he, he gave himself to Jesus Christ, and he met Jesus before he died. Now you can do the same thing. And, you know, another over 20 uh, Paiutes gave their lives to Christ on, on his, at his funeral. And then the Lord spoke to me because I had been rejected there for months. And the Lord spoke to me at that moment and said, I release you now. You can go. And so I just want you to know that if you're in a life of where you're feeling rejected all the time over things that you've done or have done or will do, but there, God has a way with you. He has a way for you. And he can get you to that. You're going to have to take some steps. And what are they? They are steps of faith. In other words, you believe for a future. And I believe that that is what, what will happen to you, that he will, he will seriously give you that, that, uh, that, that future that is in your heart, you know. When I uh, was I was on an American team, uh, tennis team, and when I left, I told them that I was uh, I was uh, going to to uh, leave, and the, uh, the I, I spoke to the <laughs> this was in the tribe. I, I did leave because now that I'm a Christian, I said let's go somewhere and preach the gospel. I was brand new, but I wanted to, to preach, so I asked some guys, I, you know, because I know you're going on a plane to the Philippines to preach, can I go with you? And they said, yes. So I got on the plane. And just half an hour on the plane, they said, what's your education? And I told them that. And they said, well, you, I, we don't like that. Who are your friends? I told them. They said, we don't like them. And the, so then the head guy said, you will not be allowed to preach. You will not be allowed to pray. You will not be allowed to do anything. All you're allowed to do is to listen to us. These are Americans that are going to the Philippines. So I thought, well, wow, I, this has really caught me by surprise to be rejected, rejected, rejected. It seems like every time I act on doing something that a rejection comes. I don't know, maybe in your life that happens, but God can turn it around. So they said, you know, the only thing I could do was sit down and listen to them. So I started by sitting down and listening to them. But after doing that for hours and hours and hours and then days, I said, there's something else I must do in this country. This was in the uh, Philippine island country. So I just started to look for a prison. You say, what were you looking for? I was looking for a prison, a place where people would be sleeping. So I, f I found on the road, I found a prison in that place. And I said, would you mind if I preached to them? And the guy said, well, we have to lock the gates be behind you, so you will not be able to get out if you go in to preach. And I said, I understand that, but I'm still going to do it if you allow me to. And they did. They opened the door, locked it behind me, and they were sh the, the, the prisoners were shocked that I was there. I was not guilty of anything, but I was there, and I just told them, I, I'm here to speak to you, to preach to you. And I, be I began to preach for a couple hours to them, and then uh, some of them got saved. So then I just said, well, okay, the day is done. And the, the head of it, the interesting thing, the guy who was the head of this prison, he had a back injury. His whole back was injured, and he was bent over. And I said, you know, I can not only preach, but I can heal you. And he says, you can heal me? I said, yes, because Jesus can heal you, and Jesus lives in me. Would you like him to heal you? And he said, of course, I would love anybody to heal me. Nobody in the hospital can heal me. And I said, well, then y yield yourself to Jesus. I'm going to pray over you. And this is the head of the prison. So <laughs> I reached out, prayed over his back, told it, told it to, st to straighten up. And I said, now, straighten your body up. And he straightened up his body. The pain went away. And he said, wow, what did you do? I said, I went to the healer. The healer is not me. The healer is Jesus Christ. Even you who are listening tonight or today, 
as you're listening. Remember this, that the Word of God is, is yes, it's great for your future. There's a billions of years in your future. And if you connect with Him, the most important thing is to know that Jesus is living in you because that means you're, per he's, you're preparing yourself for a future in heaven. But if that's not the case and you just need a healing in your body, remember this, that as you hear that this is one of the things that Jesus does, allow him to do that in your, let your first prayer be, Lord, would you open up my heart and my body and let your life come in. And he is a God who cares. He's a God who loves and he's a God who heals. So I want you to take that and to, to uh, take advantage of that. So when I went there to the uh, to the tribe with the uh, Americans the first time I went there, and they were they were just saying no 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 I can't do anything. Then I when when it was time to go I said no I'm not going to go home with you I'm just going to stay here, and uh, they said well you're going to just stay alone I said I'm I'm going to stay alone, so <laughs> I'm alone in this Philippine island, and two guys they said what are you here for I said well I'm here to preach, they said well. Why don't you come with us? We'll share a place where you can preach. And I saw so I walked with them into a mountain range for four days. And uh, what we did is they took me to a tribe of cannib uh, uh, cannibals. And <laughs> it was actually a very dangerous tribe. And they said, here, we take taken you here, preach to them. So uh, I thought, wow, this is a dangerous place to be. And uh, I said, do you ever eat people? They said, yes. <laughs> and I said, wow. Well, uh, I, I just started to speak to them. And after the fourth day, they, uh, their hearts opened up. And 300 of this tribe received Jesus as their Lord. And I said, now, you're going to have to make a commitment. And the commitment I want you to make is I want you to show each other by going with me into the stream, into the river, and I'm going to baptize you in Christ, in the river. You're going to wake up free and a, a child of God. I want you to do that. 300 of them came into the water with me, and I baptized them, raised them up, sent them back to their tribe to change their tribe. And uh, so it seemed odd, it seemed uh, strange to do that, but just think, I was rejected by all the Americans, but it was the cannibals that, that received me, <laughs> and they received Christ. And now that they are now a movement of Christ in their, in their island population. So these are things that uh, I think that you have to be uh, desiring and be wanting in your life, that Jesus coming into your life makes you impossible. You have, you have the possibilities to do anything that's impossible. Why? Because the impossible one lives in you. And uh, you will have defining moments in your life where you'll say, well, I can't do this or I can't do that. But as you continue on in that place, whether it's a business, whether it's a, a, a sport, whether it's ministry, that there is a place that God has put in you to fulfill your life. And you'll, you, he'll show you the defining moments of your life. So I, uh, I just wanted to share that as, so that you understand how I got started. And I want you to know not just about Jesus, but I want you to know that you're started in a walk with him. And uh, over the years, we've been, uh, uh, we've been given quite amazing opportunities and people that no one would even know that we would be in connection with them. But I received a phone call several years later. Now, this is almost now, what, almost 40 years later now. And I received a phone call from a man named T.L. Osborne. T.L. Osborne is known as one of the most premier evangelists of the world. And he gave me a call. Leslie and I were surprised. We, we were actually living at that time in Moscow, Russia. And we received this call from Osborne. And I just said, Dr. Osborne, I said, uh, you know, you've never been to Russia. Uh, he goes, that's what I'm calling you about. I'd like to go to Russia. And I've heard that you're living in Russia. And I said, he said, I, well, I said, that's true. And I said, I'm going to hop on a plane and come back and talk to you. And so that's what I did. I jumped on a plane, 
flew back to America and had a meeting with him. And the reason I wanted to meet with him is I knew that Russia and the 17 different regions of Russia, all around Russia, I knew that they were without Christ. I said, listen, we can get you there and we can get you through there, but I would like for you to open up because I know that this is a favor, but I'd like for you to open up the, the, the uh, place where I can preach and Leslie can preach while we're traveling with you. And you can preach, I can preach, Leslie can preach, that we'll go into all 17 of these, you call them countries or regions, but, or, but it, is a, it is a vast, Russia is a vast, vast territory. And it says that we'll go across Russia and we'll reach all of these territories. And that's exactly what we did. And that really helped me by him, by us helping him. It helped me understand that God would use me in even in a very uh, strict or different way. He'd use me because of Dr. Osborne is used to healing the sick. He's used to miracle ministry. He's, he's actually a, one of the founders of miracle ministry in the globe. And so that got into us, that got into me, that we can do miracle ministry through this understanding. And we'll, get, we'll give you that, uh, to, we'll give you information of that, of how to get that done in your own life. Uh, because I, I've overcome all these rejections, and now I, I'm finished with him, and we have confidence, confidence that when we lay hands on people, they will be healed, and not even laying hands, when we just speak the word of life to them. And now I think it would be good if I spoke the word of life over your life right now, your body right now, you who are listening to me right now. I speak life the life of Jesus coming into your body, the life of Jesus fixing your, your uh, wrist, your, your feet, your ankles, your, everything where there's pain in your body. I speak to that pain and I command it to go by the authority given me that is the authority of the name of Jesus. So you say this with me. Jesus, I do believe you are my Lord. And Jesus, I ask you into my life and I ask you to heal every joint, every, every part of my body from the, do from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head. I thank you, Lord, for touching this body so I can live a good and a long life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.